Hey guys, welcome to the Deep South Kitchen. I'm Wanda and today is another Shelf Stable Pantry Recipe. This collab was started by Mary Ellen at Prepper Potpourri. She has had us doing a video on the first Tuesday of every month and this will be my third video I think. So I'm going to put the others up here plus the playlist to the Shelf Stable pantry items because there's some good things. Lots of people are saying I have all this stuff stored in my pantry. How do I cook it? So today we're going to be making spaghetti. In my cookbook from garden to pantry to table in the deep south kitchen and they are available on Etsy. On page 39 I have how I make spaghetti. In my recipe, I call for gluten-free spaghetti, but you can use any type of gluten-free spaghetti. You can use regular spaghetti and vermicelli. Today, I'll be using vermicelli. Uh, you need ground beef, some type of tomatoes, sugar, salt, pepper, Italian seasonings, garlic, onions, and bell peppers. Okay, so I'm not following my recipe exactly, but I am gonna follow it somewhat. So we're gonna talk about spaghetti. You can buy regular spaghetti. You can buy, like I said, I like vermicelli. I like the little thin spaghetti as opposed to the thick spaghetti, but they have all kinds. They have flat spaghetti, egg noodles, you name it. Um, these are corn noodles. These are from, um, this is penne pasta. It is gluten-free. I put this up in 16. We're still using on some I got in 16 and it works just fine. So what I did, I vacuum sealed it, put an oxygen absorber in there. So dig out your stuff like this. This is from uh, Sam, Sam Mills. It is a gluten-free pasta. That is what this is, Sam Mills. And I found it to be one of the best uh, brands that I like of pasta that is uh, gluten-free. So Sam Mills. But your local Walmart carries a uh, Heartland brand, gluten-free. I don't like it as much, but in a pickle, it works. So you can dig out any of your um, shelf-stable pastas, and you can take these and put them in a um, Mylar bag and heat seal them for a longer term with oxygen absorbers. Also, if you don't have spaghetti, I've got freeze-dried zucchini. I freeze-dried zucchini, and Danny and I, that when I make spaghetti for him, I use the zucchini. He loves it better than the corn pastas and stuff that are gluten-free. So when we have plenty of zucchini, I freeze-dried, I shredded it and freeze-dried it, and it is amazing. So that is our base for spaghetti. Now cheeses, shelf-stable, you've got your Shaker cheeses, like this is Parmesan, but they come in different flavors. You can get all kinds of shaker cheeses. They'll last for a while. You can get your jarred cheeses. This one is uh, queso blanca, and you can get cheddar, sharp, whatever. And then you can get your canned cheeses. That also works. Uh, this one is cheddar. And that is if you're making a spaghetti melt. You might want to use some of these. This is mainly if you want to um, just sprinkle it on top as spaghetti. Another of your um, shelf staple items that you gotta have to make spaghetti is gonna be ground beef. Now this I put up in 18. Um, this one was um, put up, I think I browned it, then poured over some juice and it preserved it. The, the fat preserves it, so it's okay. But if you don't have canned um, ground beef, you can use chicken, turkey, pork, whatever you want in spaghetti. It's not just limited to ground beef, but if you don't have canned ground beef and you have um, like some um, freeze dried beef that you've gotten from some of these, um, like My Patriot Supply and things like that, then use the freeze dried ground beef. So that's your um, stable in the middle of it. Then we're going to talk about spices. Spices is shelf stable. Now this is my onions. I freeze dried onions. Um, we also have onions that are 
mints. You can buy them in the store this way. Um, this is onion powder. You can buy it this way. I have fresh onions. So any way you want to do onions, garlic, you can, same thing. You can get minced garlic. You can get garlic powder. Have fresh garlic. Any way you want to do it. Then if you want to cheat a little bit and you don't want to add, uh, measure out all these type things here individually, let's do the Italian seasonings. They come in these little containers here and they already have, uh, let's see, oregano, basil, rosemary, thyme, marjoram, sage. So both of them have the same things in it. This one is freeze dried. These are simply um, dehydrated. And so I have a variety of brands with Italian seasonings. I also um, dehydrated some of my basil. So I have basil of my own basil. Another thing you can do for oregano and any that you have essential oils, and I would make sure that it is uh, food safe essential oils, I have doTERRA. You can use your oregano. Now oregano is very potent and when you're using it in cooking, you only want to dip a toothpick in it and put it over in there because it does amplify the flavor. You get oregano with just less than a drop. The other thing I'm gonna be doing is tomatoes. You gotta to have tomatoes of some sort in order to make spaghetti. Now I have tomatoes and onions done in 21 and I'm gonna be using that today. I could also use my salsa because my salsa simply is tomatoes, onions, peppers, um, real simple. So I could use the salsa mix too that we had made. If you don't have your own canned foods, they have diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato paste, uh, whole tomatoes, tomato puree, anything in a can you can make spaghetti sauce with. So check it out. Also, there are mixes that are shelf stable, spaghetti mixes that come in little packets. You can do that. You can set, uh, get those mixes. If you don't want to do any of this with your flavoring, you can get the mixes and just pour it in. It's already to your taste. Another thing you can do, they make jars of spaghetti sauce like ragu, prego, all kinds of um, spaghetti sauces in the store that are shelf stable. You can buy those up and that eliminates this whole step down here. We're opening the tomatoes and onions, pouring those in. Adding our salt to taste. Adding a little pepper to taste. And then Italian seasonings. We're gonna let this start um, simmering. I'm gonna open the ground beef, take the fat and the juice off, and add it to it. In order to get the fat out of this um, hamburger, because you can see there's a good bit of fat in it, I'm going to go ahead and heat it in this and then drain it before adding it to my sauce. this and got the fat out. And we're going to add one sprinkle of sugar to kill the tomatoey taste. Tangy tomatoey taste. And that is optional. You don't have to add it to it. We're going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes. You can test the spaghetti to see if it's tender once the fork cuts through. 
it's all in pieces. That's what you want. And there is a secret to that. You can put a, a teaspoon of oil of any kind in there while it's cooking, and it will help keep the spaghetti separated. Now you can serve this over your spaghetti, but I like mine mixed, so. And we're gonna turn the fire off and let it sit on the warm stove. We're gonna make some rolls to go with it. And we will be ready to eat shortly. Now, if you wanted to make a spaghetti bake, this is what you would do. You would add some cheese to this, any type of cheese you want. Put it in a casserole dish, throw it in the oven for about 10-15 minutes at 350. Sprinkle some cheese on top, let it bake till that cheese is done. And you've got a spaghetti bake. But I'm eating it as is with some rolls and it looks amazing. So we're gonna let this sit till we're ready to eat. Okay, the spaghetti is ready. We're fixing to eat. And I can't do it the way most people do, rolling it on the fork, but Mm. That is perfect. It might not be the famous spaghetti you're used to making slow and easy in a crock pot or all day cooking the spaghetti sauce, but when you're hungry, my quick spaghetti is amazing. And I kind of grew up with it this way anyway. Mm. So thank you, Mary Ellen, for inviting us to be a part of the Shelf Stable um, collaboration. Check out all the um, other participants in the collaboration. Find out new Shelf Stable ideas, how to use your Shelf Stable food, and uh, get to cooking, guys. Thank you from Crazy Days.